What's up, Data Pipeliners? Welcome back to another episode on Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about logging. Uh, logging is a very important feature of um, any kind of system, any kind of software system, in order to figure out what actually is going on with the system. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about how we can do logging for your Kedro pipelines. Uh, hold on one second. Let me just make sure that the image is correct. And there it is right here next to me. Sometimes you got to do these things on the fly. Okay, great. So today we're going to be showing you how you can start to write logs with Kedro. So what is logging? Well, logging is the tracing code that lives in your pipelines that enables your programmers, your users to understand, debug, and monitor what actually is going on with your pipeline. Um, this is especially very important when you have larger pipelines and you need to figure out exactly what's going on. But um, logging in itself is actually a, a huge field. Um, there's an excellent book uh, by Google called the SRE Handbook where they talk about logging in more detail. But um, basically, you want to try to find uh, ways to log your code that is not too um, loud as well as not too soft. And so what we mean by loud and soft is you don't want to have too many logs so that your logs are just streaming and it's impossible to comprehend, but you also don't want your logs to be too minimal that you don't know what's going on. And so re finding that balance is, uh, is really a part of the difficulty of logging. But you know today we're just going to be talking about how we can get that done. So let's take a look at Kedro's logging features. Kedro, of course, comes with its own built-in logging modules. Um, and this right here below me is the documentation on Kedro Read the Docs about logging. Um, the configuration here that they're talking about, this configure logging, um, where you actually set up your logging in your project context. Uh, this is actually, I think, for more uh, advanced logging use cases. Um, but the stuff that I've been doing, and you know, I, I'll be honest, I actually I haven't had an opportunity to set up logging uh, with the context, but you can imagine yourself doing some extra handles where you have something that outputs to a proper monitoring service, uh, for example, like Elasticsearch feeding into Kibana um, or even Grafana, where you collect these metrics and properly um, maintain the state of your pipeline in, in that external service. Um, but the logging that we're going to be talking about today is just very simple logging inside of your pipelines. And so this is the one that will just be coming out from your console. Uh, and so Kedra actually comes with a really great uh, built-in feature for logging. If you take a look inside of your conf folder, your configuration folder in your base, you have your logging.yaml file. And inside of the logging.yaml file, we actually have all of the all of the pieces of logging configuration that you really need to use. Um, so here, we're, let's just break this down a bit. You have your version on the top. Uh, you have a little bit of configuration here where you disable the existing loggers. And you have your formatters. So your formatters are what actually uh, are used in order to generate the log message. So here we have the format where we use the time, uh, the name of the logger, the level name, which is the difference between info, um, warning, error, and these kinds of things, as well as the actual logging message that you want to track. Um, going down here, we have the handlers. The handlers are the exact uh, logging mechanisms that are going to be used by uh, your logging your logging configurations to do the logging. Sorry, I keep saying logging a lot. Uh, but here the handlers are, in this case, the console, the info file handler, and then the error file and journal file handler. Now these guys, the way that they work is they you, you specify the class that you want to use for the log. Um, and here logging that stream handler, this is a built-in class for Python. Um, and stream really means out to your, your standard out. Uh, so the console handler will take any logging data and then just output it directly to your console. The info, log, the info file handler uses this rotating file handler. And I think that this is one of my favorite handlers um, where it will take your logging messages and pipe them into a file. And then 
once the file reaches a particular size, it actually gets rolled over. So a new file gets created and then the logs get streamed into the new file. And then uh, what happens here is that you can have a limit of your backups. And so you can see here, there's a backup count of about 20. So that means that you'll have about 20 info files before you no longer uh, are tracking the, 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 the most recent, the, the most, the, the, the latest one, um, not the latest, but the oldest one. And then the oldest one gets removed um, as you create a new one. Uh, and then the same thing goes with the error file handler. And you can see here that the level is being specified. So we're, we're talking about the info level and an error level. Um, we'll, we'll probably be discussing a little more about the differences between these levels, uh, but you can, you, can, you can just understand them as the difference between the detail or the granularity of the data that you are logging. And then finally, we have this specialized class that's actually built into Kecho which is the journal file handler. And so this allows you to log for, I mean, using, using Kedro versioning. And so Kedro has a built-in journal function that we'll probably be talking about in another video. So these are the loggers that are actually using the handlers. And what you can do here is you can modify the level as well as the actual handlers that you wanna use for this particular log. Uh, and this is actually really useful when you have another library, something such as um, AWS's uh, Boto3, which has its own logging handlers. Uh, the problem sometimes arises where the logging handlers of S3 or Boto3 um, are too loud and you actually don't need that particular level of granularity in your particular pipeline. Uh, as such, what you can do is you can actually modify the levels as well as the handlers that that logger is attached to right here inside of the logging.yaml. And we'll be going through an example uh, on that very shortly. And then finally, you have the root uh, handler. This is our the main handler and it shows what gets output. And for the main handler, it only does this uh, info level. So right here, we have a pipeline, which is our, of course, beloved Iris data set. This is the built-in pipeline. And we can see here, it just has our two pipelines here, the data engineering and data science. What we're gonna do is inside of the data engineering node, we're gonna add some specialized logging. Uh, we're gonna just go ahead and add a very simple row count. So we can just see what the row count is of our particular, you know, of our particular data sample. So in order to add logging, what we have to do first is we have to import the logging library. So you just type in import, logging. And so Python has this built in. Uh, this should be available to you. And now what you want to do is you want to actually create a logging handler. Um, there's a few ways that you can do this, but the, the way that I always do this is I use, first I create a logger object, which will be the handler. And then what we can do is we can do logging.getLogger. And now what's happening here is that the logging module is going to look inside of its global namespace of log handlers that it already has access to and it will return a particular handler to you for this for this use um, in our case what we're going to be doing actually is we're going to be creating a brand new logger um, handler so we, we won't actually have this in the global namespace already so the way that we can do that is we can just go ahead and type in a new name uh, of course, actually using name is also fine where you have it as the name of the module. Um, so now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add this logger. So we have our, our data here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and use logger, which is the new handler. And then we can use our different levels. So we can use error if we have an error. Um, debug if we want to do more detailed debug messages. Warning. Um, if there's like a particular thing that we want to inform the user about and then info where it's just the highest level log. Uh, in this case, let's go ahead and track the length of our samples. So if we go ahead and just go and put in an F string. And now what we're going to do is we're going to also have the sample size. Um, now that that's set up. Let's go ahead and give the data engineering pipeline a run and we, can, we should be able to see these logs in our output. 
And here we go. We have our two log messages, data size and sample size. So it's certain, it, seems, it seems that the sample size is indeed the same um, as the data, original data size. Maybe what we can do is instead use test data uh, as, a, as a better example. So let's go ahead and grab test data size and then training data size. And now when we rerun the pipeline, we see here our data size is 150, our test data size is 30, and our training data size is 120. And so in our case, maybe info is not the best for understanding what the data size is. We could probably get away with using our debug log. And so this will just give us the amount of, um, this will give us the more granular log access. And so and when we run the pipeline, we're not gonna show the debug log because it's a debug level. Um, however, if we change our root level to debug, we see that it still doesn't show up in our stream. And that's because our stream handler is also modifying the output here. So our stream handler, the console handler, is only filtering to info. But if we change this one to debug as well, then we should see a change. And here it is, our debug data is output. Now this is really useful, again, when you have other modules or other Python libraries that wanna clog up your debug space. Uh, you, can, you can explicitly choose to filter out particular logs um, as well as keep some other ones. So let me just show you an example of what that looks like here. We'll have logger2, and we're gonna name this guy something simple, just say annoying uh, logs. And now what we'll do is we'll just add in like a for loop here. Now, because our logging YAML configuration is still in debug mode, um, as well as the, the console being in debug mode, we can go ahead and rerun this guy and we should see our annoying log here. And there it is, annoying log, ha ha ha. So what we wanna do is we wanna get rid of that log. What you can do is you can grab the name of the log itself um, and make sure that we're inside of the loggers uh, configuration. And then we can do a few things, right? So one thing that we can do is we can just change the level of the log. And maybe you just only wanna have the info. Uh, make sure that you grab the same handlers and then don't propagate. So when we run this guy, we should filter out all those debug messages, even though our pipeline is still set in debug mode. So here you can see, we still have the original debug messages, but we don't have those annoying logs. Alternatively, you can still keep debug, but you can just drop all the handlers. So we no longer get any of the handlers that are coming through. Um, you can also, of course, pick and choose the handlers that you want. So for example, maybe you don't want these annoying logs showing up inside of your console, but you might want them inside of your, inside of a debug file handler. So what we could do is we can actually gr create a new file handler um, just for this guy. And instead of info file handler, we'll call it the annoying handler. And it's just a rotating file handler. Uh, and it's just gonna be in an annoying log, making sure that we have the appropriate level set to debug. And then we can pop that guy into there. And, and there we go, we don't have the output in our console, but we should have our annoying log and there they are. So with these tools, you should be able to modify your pipeline, make your pipeline much more open and much more understandable uh, from a data engineering perspective. Uh, and you'll be able to maintain your pipelines more easily and better. That wraps it up for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. If you made it this far, make sure you button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. Cheers, take care, bye-bye everyone.